the princess issued a statement saying, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiments with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. Well, joining us now to discuss this is royal photographer Ian Lloyd. Um, Ian, first of all, let's go through some of those editing errors. Uh, we've got the fabric missing on Charlotte's cardigan. We've got Kate Middleton's mm. missing wedding ring, the, the biggest one of all, I think, and Prince Louis's kind of oddly crossed fingers there. Um, I mean, how on earth do you end up with this sort of strange Frankenstein ensemble from a photograph that someone's <laughs> taken? Oh, well, I, I think like the rest of us, you take a photograph and you think, oh, it's not bad. And then you look and you think, oh, what a shame, you know, that the handkerchief's showing and it shouldn't be and, and all those little bits. So you decide to, to tinker with it and somebody tinkered at Kensington Palace and just sort of um, made a bit of a hash of it, really. Um, and it comes in, in the wake of um, the princess's Christmas card, which was uh, criticised because Louis apparently was missing a finger and there was an extra leg in the shot that shouldn't have been there. Um, so you would think that... Uh, it's OK taking your own photographs in-house. It's very good because you do get the children to relax. Trying to get three kids of that age to pose and be happy is, is, is beyond many photographers. So uh, the, the picture's great, but um, it's the tinkering that's gone wrong. And they really should um, have sent it off to uh, surely there's a trusted person that they can find that, uh, um, you know, can doctor these pictures in a, in a, in a way that would be happy for, for them and for, for the rest of us. Yeah, I always thought, Ian, that, you know, it's, of course, their prerogative. It's their choice. If they want to take their own uh, happy snaps to put out officially, uh, I suppose they can do that. But I always thought, well, what about professional photographers? Why put them out of work? Why don't you get professional photographers to come in and take these pictures? And then if they need doctoring, editing afterwards, they would be that process would be done in a very professional manner. What we've got here is, if it's true, we're told William took the snap with his phone and then Kate got in there and started editing it in the manner that I would, you know, like a sort of bumbling amateur. I mean, are you surprised that the Kensington Palace press machine, publicity machine, allowed this picture to go out and allowed this process to happen? I mean, it's just amateur hour. Well, I think that probably they thought that was part of the charm to, you know, to, to, to release a photograph that was, you know, the sort of photograph that you or I could take of the family on, on, on Mother's Day. And they probably thought, oh, that's quite a nice picture. We'll just send it out. And they wouldn't have obviously expected this this vast um, amount of, of, of Ferrari. I mean, I've done TV interviews with Canada, Spain, Mexico and Poland today. I mean, <laughs> my God, it's global. You know, uh, people all over the world are in sort of fascinated by it. So, um, I mean, it's always gone on, this relationship between um, manipulating the image and the royal family and photography uh, from the days of Queen Victoria. I mean, she was uh, quite heavily lined and the photographers used to, um, you know, airbrush her out and uh, uh, release better pictures and everybody was very happy with it. But the problem is the digital age and William and Kate's, you know, as you say, insistence to do these things in-house and privately. I so think... it's all right, one thing taking the pictures. Go on. Yes, I think one of the problems we have here is nobody knows where Kate is, how poorly she is. That is the first uh, mm. speculation going on here. Then we get this photograph, which is supposed to sort of give us sucker and make us realise she's doing well, she's looking good, she's enjoying time with the kids. But then you've got this mm. unprecedented kill order from all of the picture agencies who are essentially saying, well, we're not going to run this as an official photograph because it's kind of been too doctored, which I think has sort of led people to the suspicion that perhaps it is so edited that it's not, not even even, you know, tangible to the truth of the situation. I mean, as a photographer looking at that picture, can we at least take some uh, positivity from it? That, that she might have done a, you know, tweak here and there, but it is what it's supposed to be. Or could you look at that and say, oh gosh, maybe that is from like, you know, five years ago and various bits of photographs all stuck together? It's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I think when you uh, look at it, I mean, it's a great picture. I mean, it's, you know, showing the kids happily um, relaxed. I mean, you look at royal portraiture, uh, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago with the late queen and her children. It was all terribly formal, suits and ties and, you know, sort of standing three feet, feet apart. I mean, it, it, it's a, a very positive message of a united family and a, ha a happy one. Um, but 
because of those problems like, you know, the people are speculating the trees were wrong time of season and could it be an old photograph and so on. It's led people to, to be very, very suspicious about it. Mm. So what started off as a really nice idea to show Kate's really well and the kids are having a great time has backfired. So it's, um, I mean, that's a, it's uh, an own goal, really. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking, you, you'll be aware of this, Ian. Um, it, we're talking about the major world photo agencies, you know, PA, Reuters, mm. AP, Getty, AFP, uh, Agence France Press. So all the big agencies just said, this picture is a no-no. Now, if you'd have taken that photo and you'd have made have seen a few things saying, oh, well, that doesn't look a bit untidy, if you'd have edited it, they wouldn't have noticed because you're a professional. So I go back to my question, what on earth is Kensington Palace doing allowing amateurs to produce these very significant pictures? This just wasn't just a, a Mother's Day picture. This was the picture that was supposed to quell speculation that there was something more seriously wrong with Kate than we've been told, because that's what everybody mm. has been uh, talking about, have been speculating about. So this was a very significant picture, and they just sort of chucked it out. Oh, William took it. Oh, Kate had a quick look. Let's just put that out. I mean, they've really got to raise their game, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, I think they obviously thought this was a private picture. It's very, it's a, it's a, it's a personal picture and an amateurish picture, and that would be its charm. But I think they've got to make sure, as you say, from now on, that um, even if they take them themselves, that somebody intervenes. You know, they could probably send them to somebody at MI5 or MI6 or something. But somebody could, somebody could knock together a kind of a a decent, um, you know, sort of picture removing anything that they don't want to be seen. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's, it will only increase the speculation at the moment until, uh, until another royal story knocks this off the front page of the court. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. Ian, thank you ever Thanks, so Ian. much. Ian Good Lloyd, for talking. All right, take care. We're still joined, of course, by The Times' chief political correspondent, Aubrey Allegretti. Uh, you're going to have to do your royals a bit more for us today. But this is the problem, isn't it? I think we live in a world now where we have so many uh, alerts about deep fakes, AI, nothing is what you think it is, that, you know, the wall can be pulled over your eyes in many ways. We have that controversy of a photograph of her in her mum's car uh, circulated around the world and people say, oh, yeah, she's been seen, she's been seen, but we weren't allowed to see it. Now you've got this picture which is supposed to put out to reassure us that actually she's okay, everything's okay, the family are happy. Mm. And then people are thinking, but is this photograph even genuine? I mean, really, what we need to see or hear is something from Kate herself. I mean, you kind of think if she can sit and take a photo in the garden, she could sort of record a little selfie and go, hi, guys, and here I am baking some cakes with mm. the kids. Well, and, took the picture, and we're all allegedly. sort of going, we're all sort of going, well, why, why has that not happened? Well, yeah, I mean... A picture paints a thousand words, and I suppose the issue from this is that the picture raises a thousand questions. Yes, it does. And so there is, you know, no matter how much the royals try and sort of respond to the speculation, I, I fear that they will feel as though they're being sucked into answering every single question. And then there are uncomfortable questions, like the, the issue with the wedding ring that you raised, Kevin. So they probably won't want to be drawn on every issue that comes up as a result of that picture, but they have only got themselves See, to blame. I think this comes on the back of uh, us, uh, you know, the media including, in, uh, and the, the people of this country, the, uh, this kind of wave of gratitude. The, oh, isn't it amazing that the, the king has cut us in on the action and told us that he's suffering from cancer, which is, which is great. It's good that he did that. And, and he made a thing uh, of saying, you know, everybody should get checked, etc., etc., because, of course, he'd had prostate problems, although it's not prostate cancer he's got, and they're in life our problem. We don't know what cancer it is he got. So he was partially transparent, but not fully. Uh, same with Kate. Oh, she's had ab abdominal surgery, but we're not going to tell you anything else. Now, you know, I do respect their right to privacy, but they are the royal family, and just by feeding us little tidbits that they decide we uh, can have, uh, but nothing more. Uh, it's not working. We are in a fever pitch of speculation about what's wrong with uh, Charles, what actual kind of cancer he's got. I'm not quite sure why they can't tell us, but they won't. And now abdominal surgery in Kate has basically is giving way to some very serious conspiracy theories. So this partial tidbit system is backfiring badly, mm -hmm. I think. I thought it was an, an interesting point that was raised in the interview before 
where we were discussing if effectively how independent photojournalists have become replaced by sort of in-house photographers, or mm. in this case, you know, the royal family sort of yeah. taking pictures themselves, distributing those to the media. And, you know, it's up to us as the media as well to take responsibility for using that, because if we refused to sort of use what we were given, then we would have every right to say, we demand to have independent photojournalists in the room taking the pictures for us who can do their own due diligence and checks and mm. you know we trust their editing processes we know what those are and it's not just the case with the royals either i mean in politics politicians are you know just keep on using these sort of taxpayer funded photographers mm. critics have called them sort of vanity snappers and it means that we don't have access to a lot of photojournalists who that who can be in the room and take potentially some uncomfortable or embarrassing pictures but they are the real pictures yeah yeah i mean the 21st century poses real difficulties for the royal family because i think where we didn't have social media before so you just had to take what you were given um now you've got this whole conversation going on anyone can be a citizen journalist spot something photograph something it's very difficult to keep anything private and if you try to well you're going to be chastised for doing so and it's how they then then navigate this because i'm sure even when kate does come back to public life people will still be asking the question of what was wrong with you why yeah. weren't you here and don't forget as a long-standing hack uh, i can tell you we always worked under the slogan the camera never lies reporters sometimes do not me but sometimes they do uh, the camera never lies well now we know mm -hmm. the camera can Everything lie lies in now. fact the cat when the camera lies it's worse than when people lie, and therein lies uh, the world's right. problem. You should right see now. me without this filter. I'm actually 105 years old. Yeah, it's not a pretty sight, folks, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> we were in some ways lucky to, to sort of have a picture which had so many noticeable flaws and errors. Yeah. Mm. Because the alternative was that we would have been supplied a picture that was edited, but we would never have realised it. Totally right. It's a good point, yeah. Well, you've been texting us a lot on this uh, about whether or not you think the royal family have uh, given us enough information about what's going on. And um, this is what you have had to say, uh, talking about whether they've been transparent enough with Kate's health problems. Evan says, if people are paying for them, they deserve to know. Linda says, truthfulness is not a card in their deck. And Graham says, personally, I am not that bothered. I wish her nor her family no ill will. A lot of double negatives there. Uh, Maggie says, yes, her health is her and her family's business. And that's it. No, it's not. We pay for them. We've got a right to know uh, exactly how long they'll be in position, how long, whether they'll accede to the crown, etc., etc., etc. They are not allowed to be totally private. Those, and those, that's pri that. those privacy protesters in yeah. Montecito are probably yeah. are having just, a field day today. It's just a, a, sort of a certain amount of adult honesty. Uh, I mean, I'm not so knocking them. They've got the right to be... I, I understand it, but a certain amount of honesty, more than we've had so far, might have helped.